Hey YouTube, it's your boy Widgie here, coming at you with some more strategy games with AoE 3DE and today I'm bringing you another beginner's guide, this is the third one to the edition and it is the Dutch. So we are going to break this guide into three parts, just like last time, so the first part is going to be looking at the unique buildings, units and capabilities of the civilization. the second is going to be looking at a 1v1 deck and I'll also show you a team deck as well because I didn't do that before and the third thing will be showing you a build order in action, mainly for 1v1 situations but pretty much you could use this in a team situation as well so i hope you guys really enjoy this you guys know what to do to support the channel you can catch me streaming on twitch at widgy one let's do this so step number one the unique features buildings capabilities and all that good stuff so the features of the sieve are settlers cost coin so kind of uh sort of similar to india where they cost wood um the settlers cost coin for the dutch um, and they have a lower train limit of 50. However, with the recent patch update, there are two extra cards you can get to increase the limit from 50 straight up to 60. So that is a recent patch that has just occurred. And also they gather from mines at 15% faster and this has actually been increased in the recent patch as well. So moving on to the second feature, they obviously build banks to automatically produce coin. So this is something similar to like a Kancha house for the Inca, uh, Torps for the Swedes. It's a building that automatically gathers resources indefinitely for the game. So super crucial that banks play an important part in the build order, which we'll move on in step three. So the third is starts with an envoy. So the envoy is essentially an, a scouting unit for you that, that sort of starts with your explorer. So we will get into how to use your envoy to the best capabilities at the start of the game. Moving on to the fourth, it's just royal guard units, the halberdier and the writer, um, which you've got there. And the writer, moving on into unique units, the writer is your anti-cavalry unit. So it's a ranged cav unit, armed with pistols, good against cavalry and artillery. Just want to stress around the good against artillery. Um, they sort of are and they sort of aren't. Um, they're ranged, I mean yes they are, they have a bonus damage against artillery, but you have to bear in mind that artillery have a quite a high ranged resistance. So trying to use a bunch of writers to shoot down artillery will take a long time. So in some situations, it's best to put them in melee mode, which is kind of unusual, but sometimes it can work. And the final third unique unit there is the, uh, I'm going to say the flight. Uh, it's the slow, powerful uh, ship resistant to building fire that can train um, units. So I don't think I've ever actually built that ship before because I rarely go uh, sea. With the dutch uh, unique building is obviously the bank which is just mentioned uh, automatically produces coin for you you have an initial build limit on the bank of five but i believe you can with the use of cards and upgrades you can get that all the way to 11. Um, please correct me if i'm wrong but i believe it is 11. so with that in mind let's jump to step two which is looking at the 1v1 deck and also i'll show you a sneak peek of the team decks that i use as well let's do this Okay, so let's have a look at the 1v1 deck we have right here. So this is for land, and I'll show you water as well, but there aren't many uh, differences between the two. So this is your age one. We are going to be focusing on age one, two, and partly three, not so much on four, because as I say, usually when I uh, showcase the build order, I'm really only giving you an idea of the first 10 minutes of gameplay. So just bear that in mind. So age one, We've got the three settlers, which is pretty much going to be your first card that you select when you start your build order, your opening build order. And you've got the two banks here. And this is what I mentioned about increasing the settler build limit um, by five. So this is a recent patch that has just come in. And these two, you're probably going to be getting these two a lot later on in the game. So this is going to be your first card that you're going to want to get in age one. As you transition to age two, we've got a variety of options we can choose here depending on the situation. But normally you're either going to select the 700 wood or you're going to select a bank wagon. Now bank wagons are really good because bank wagons will give you a ton of XP when they're built. Uh, also building your own banks as well gives you a ton of XP which will mean that you can then get uh, more cards out uh, a lot quicker. But usually you either go for the 700 wood or the bank wagon. If you go bank wagon, it's more greedy. Uh, 700 wood is better because you can get a barracks up quicker just in case you need to defend yourself. So usually it's 700 wood uh, and then bank wagon. 
and then normally going in with the uh, either the four settlers next and then the chest of 700 coin or sometimes you can go for the 600 wood again and then you can go for the 700 coin. There's actually a multitude of ways you can do this depending on the situation but primarily you kind of want to focus on getting your 700 wood, you want to get your bank wagon uh, and then you want to get another 600 wood again and then you want to think about aging up around that sort of time or if you want to hold out a bit longer go for the four settlers and then get your 700 gold sometimes the gold this is the thing sometimes the gold isn't necessary because of the amount of banks you have and the amount of gold that you're generating you won't really need to actually get this seven gold 700 gold out sometimes this 700 gold will actually be used to train troops in age two to defend if you're being rushed so just bear that in mind very sort of versatile uh, this deck so just bear that in mind if, if I give you a build order don't always just solely follow that order uh, it depends on the situation and how you react and that just takes time uh, it's just one of those things I can't really teach that uh, moving looking into age three um, normally uh, it's good to get the nine writers out but as I say it depends on what your uh, opponent is going if they are going heavy cavalry then nine writers is really good. Also, nine writers can be good for raiding villagers. So going behind their base, shooting some of the villagers down potentially, and just harassing. Um, sometimes going the eight skirms is good as well. And also thousand wood can be really good if you want to get another TC. It's another town center. If you want to start producing villagers quicker, uh, you want to increase your economy even further. Uh, getting a thousand wood uh, can be really useful. And just looking quickly at age four, you've got two factories here, which are kind of your standard pretty much for all European civilizations. Uh, factories will just produce resources depending on what one, what resource you select. They will produce automatically and also they can automatically produce uh, these heavy cannons. Uh, but this is a card that you will definitely want to put in your deck, which is the Tulip Speculation. And that increases all the gather work rate for coin at 20%. So all of your banks... It will increase all of your bank coin generation by 20%. So that's kind of significant. So that's the 1v1 land. Just quickly looking at the 1v1 water, you can see if I switch between the two, there's not really that much difference. Uh, all we're doing in, in here is we've removed the 700 coin in age two, and we have replaced it with two caravels, which are quite good to get out onto the sea to secure. Uh, and also um, they are good at taking down uh, fishing boats as well. And also, I believe the uh, only difference here is that we've now got the refrigeration card in H3 to improve our food gather rate. Um, and that's pretty much it, really. Uh, moving on to the team decks. Um, as I say, not a huge difference if I go between the two. Um, sort of because team games generally go on a lot longer you're going to want to probably focus more on your economic cards so anything that increases the gather rate for example you've got sustainable agriculture you've got your food silos uh, you've got your refrigeration and potentially 1600 wood in age four can help upgrade a lot of your troops um, so they're just some of the differences there and there's a the team water deck as well so and that's the flights, those unique units that I mentioned. So that's a rundown of the deck. I know I went through that pretty quickly, but just have a look at that, study it, copy it, maybe adjust it if you want to, if you're not happy with certain things. Um, without further ado, let's jump into the final stage, which is looking at a 1v1 build order. Let's do this. Right, okay guys, we have jumped into one of my previous videos uh, a couple of months ago when I was learning to play the Dutch and this is in a 1v1 ranked situation and I'm playing against the French and I've got in the background, you might hear Vicious who was actually coaching me at the time because he had a lot more experience playing as the Dutch but I've just had a quick look through this and the builder that I mentioned before when I was going through the decks is very similar to what I do here. As I say, it may divert uh, slightly depending on how I react to the opponent but that's just how it goes. So without further ado, let's do this and let's jump straight into it and I'll show you a sort of a basic opening for the Dutch on a 1v1 land situation. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna put three vills onto your gold. The reason you wanna do that is because you just wanna have a steady stream of villagers because remember, villagers cost coin and you wanna use the rest of your villies to collect crates. Uh, what I would probably suggest here actually is 
put all your villagers on collecting all of the crates first and then move three over to gold. Okay, so then what you want to do is you, yeah, you can you can see here I got I got really annoyed, but you kind of want to herd your uh, hunter balls after you've got your crates. Um, something that I've also done slightly wrong here is I've taken I think I've taken those villages off a little too early off of gold. So ideally, what you want to do is when you're ready to age up, you kind of want to have uh, 14, 15 villages before you age up into age two. So just bear that in mind because you're going to be getting three villages from your town center with your three villager shipment card. So you just need to make sure that you have 12 villages trained up out of your TC in total. 12 villages plus the three from the uh, card will mean that you're ready then to get into age two so here we go so just pretty much gathering food now i need to build a house so bear in mind this is me still learning the build order so i will be um commenting on certain things that i do wrong here and i'll be sort of saying what you should really do uh compared to what i'm currently doing i know it's kind of an interesting look on things but you can see i've sort of messed up the gold a little bit i should have kept villages on the gold a little bit longer but and i should build a house as well there you go start building one you got to bear in mind this is actually like quite a while ago now maybe two or three months ago and you know i i barely had 100 hours on the game so i've nearly got 300 hours now in the game so I'm a lot more experienced now than I was in this, so just bear with me. But I will be guiding you through it, so just bear just bear with me. So here's my envoy. So I mentioned the envoy unit, which is the scout unit. What I like to do is I like to send the envoy pretty much straight to the opponent's base. So I want to like carve, like get through all the fog of war between my base and his and then i want to start just scouting around the enemy base and i want to use my explorer to scout around my proximity so you can either do that or you can switch it and do it the other way so you can use your explorer to scout around your uh, sorry you can use your envoy to scout around your proximity and then send your explorer towards the enemy base maybe grab some of their treasures so there's a couple of ways you can do it it's entirely up to you how you want to play it yeah you can make pushing so you can see here i've got the card on the on the left side there near the mini-map. Um, I've got three villagers coming in from the town centre and I've got 11 villagers total. Um, and you can see I'm, I'm going to be ageing up here with 14 villagers. And the politician that you pretty much always want to go for when you age, get into age two is the quartermaster, which will give you 400 wood. Now, the reason you want that is wood is super crucial for the Dutch. Uh, I'm just going to pause it here and I'm just going to explain why. So... Wood is super crucial for the Dutch because the majority of the time you don't want your villagers gathering wood throughout the game. The only time that you're going to really want villagers gathering wood is the transition between age one to age two. And then beyond that, you kind of want to just be using your town center, your, your home city shipments to get you the wood. And also you really want to use your market to be able to buy wood as well. So your market is super crucial for the Dutch. Because they produce so much coin, it gives you that capability to be able to buy wood and food when you need it. And it can get you out of certain sticky situations if you really need to upgrade something or if you really need to get some troops out. You can quickly jump to the market and you can buy and sell what you need to to be able to do that. So it's crucial um, that you understand how to use the market to its fullest capabilities as the Dutch. So. So what you want to do when you're transitioning from age one to age two, you want to split your villages. So you want half on wood, half on food. Now the reason you want to do that is because before you get into age two, you want to really start building your first bank. Now a bank costs 350 food and 350 wood. So you want to kind of make your food and wood match each other. So you can see down here where my resource collection rate is. You can see that food is way above wood right now. So what I should really do is move maybe one or two off of food and get them onto wood so that they can sort of marry up perfectly in time. So you have 350 and 350, you're ready to build your first bank. So, so you can see I've, I've just got my 350 food now, but I'm, I'm still behind on my wood. So what I should do is I should just move all of my veils off of food and get them onto wood. 
Now just bear in mind, you can see I've got two villagers on gold. It is actually um, sort of crucial that you have, you should have a hundred gold by the time you age up. Because what you want to do is you want to get your next villager out as soon as possible. You want to keep that villager production going. You don't want it to stop. So make sure that you start building your first bank. You have the hundred gold for your first villager when you get into age two. By the way guys let me know if these guides are helping please let me know down below in the comments as well if there's anything that i've missed out or you think that i should improve on maybe i should add to these guides going forward i will only be doing beginner guides for civilizations that i've played quite significantly i'm not going to try and tell you what to do with civilizations that i've barely played because i just don't think it's fair so you see i've aged up i got my 400 wood because i went for the quartermaster and now i've got enough to build my first bank so to be honest i could have built that bank a lot earlier because of my the way that I was doing my macro element there, I, I wasn't doing the split perfectly. So I could have built that bank a lot earlier. And also just bear in mind, whenever you build a bank, build it with three villagers. Now the reason that you do is just overall, it's better value to use three villagers to build it rather than just one, because it just takes too long. So always remember if you're gonna build a bank, ideally have three villagers building it. So you can see there I've gone for the 700 wood. Now I did just say to myself, shall I get the bank shipment? So as I mentioned previously, when I, we looked at the deck is 700 wood, ideally is the stronger, safer option. If you go for the bank, it can be quite greedy. The reason it is, is because you're not gonna have any wood to be able to build a house. You're not gonna have anything to build a military building uh, or potentially a market as well. Like you can see here, I haven't built a market. I should really have a market up by now. Uh, personally, I think, you know, the earlier you can build a market, the better, uh, because as I mentioned, how crucial having a market is for what you need to trade and stuff like that with your coin. So what's going on here? Okay. So my expl I'm not doing a great job with exploring. Uh, I am sort of, um, not really keeping my eye on what my explorer and my envoy are doing so once again it's just experience like it's trying to multitask and this sort of stuff will take time especially from a beginner level it will take time to try and remember all these things so you can see here i grabbed three villages and i'm building my second bank now because of that 400 wood help me to get the bank so what you kind of want to do in this stage, when you do go into age two, you're going to have 400 wood, so you're not going to need to really chop wood. So what I suggest that you do is I suggest that you still keep uh, three or four villages on gold because you're still going to have, you're only going to have one bank up. So you're not going to be able to be in that state where you, where you don't need to really gather that much gold. So what I would suggest is to move the majority of your villages just straight over to food, have three or four on gold, and then just gather that wood up as it comes in from your TC. Oh yeah, of course, I forgot that, didn't I? Because you've got to bear in mind, this, this is actually pre-patch. This is before the recent patch, which increased the gather rate for uh, settlers gathering gold. So the gather rate has increased. So you can see here, my third card now is the bank card. And I've just built a barracks. Now I'm building a barracks at five minutes 46 there. Now, normally, if you're going to be playing against civilization that's going to rush you, you should really expect to rush around six, six and a half minutes, potentially, like especially from a beginner perspective, you're probably going to be expecting a rush around between six and seven minutes. So what I would suggest maybe is getting that barracks up a little bit earlier if you can. And the way that you can do that is you could potentially hold off building your second bank. So you can just build your first bank as you go into age one to age two. Then you can build your barracks and then build your second bank. But it's entirely up to you. It's, it's how sort of cautious you want to play it. It depends on a multitude of things. So, so we are building our barracks right now. And as I say, this build order, if I could call it a build order, is probably like a, it's just a semi-FF. It's probably like a skirm pike semi-FF 
um, depending on the situation. Because you can do it a different way and you can build a stables instead of a barracks. But just for the uh, just for micro purposes and stuff, we're going to be doing that. So, so this is interesting. So see what's happening here. It's six minutes twenty. So that's that's sort of around a time that you could expect to rush. And what's happened is I've got my barracks. I'm building my third bank, which came from uh, actually that hasn't come from the TC. That's that's my fourth bank from the TC. I'm building a third bank because I got that seven hundred wood, and I'm also building a market. But I've already got Cav here. So because I was playing against the French, with the French, I would expect cavalry. Now, this sort of stuff is just going to take time for you guys to sort of memorize or, or try and anticipate what the most likely sort of attack or response would be from your opponent. This sort of stuff will take time. With the French, I'm expecting cav most of the time sometimes you can expect to push with um, musketeers uh, and um, pike uh, and all sorts of stuff like that so there are different things but most of the time you'll have some sort of raid with five hussars or four hussars something like that will happen so that's why we have that card the eight pikeman card so we have the eight pikeman card for that reason and that is to help us defend our base if we need to. We also have the militia button at the TC that we can use to get our militia out and they can take down the cavalry as well. So let's just see how I react to this. So I'm getting my fourth bank from the town center. I'm making sure that I put that down so I don't lose the cart. And you can see here I'm training up some pikemen to try and deal with this attack. So there's five hussars here. Now, what the opponent isn't doing very well is he, instead of instead of sieging that bank, he should be trying to pick off my villagers. So, you know, he should be trying to raid my villagers and really hurt my eco, but instead he's trying to siege the bank. And I've managed to build the bank, and you can see the minute I built that bank, it gives you a ton of XP, like I mentioned, and I'm able then to get my eight pikemen coming out of the TC. So I've just got to wait a little bit longer and then I'll have eight pikemen to be able to deal with it. And you can see that I'm housed here as well. I've got 26 out of 20. So just poor planning. See what I should do at this point, what I should do because I'm housed, I've got 700 gold. See those banks, how powerful the banks are. Four banks up. I'm not even collecting gold and I've got 700 gold there. So I could, what I should do, and I'm hoping I'll do, is go straight to the market, buy a little bit of wood, build a couple of houses. That's what I should do. And I should also be training villagers. I'm not training any villagers at the moment. So always remember to constantly train villagers. So there you go. You saw that I did it. I bought I bought about a hundred two hundred wood there, and I built two houses. So that was the right thing to do. So what I shouldn't be doing right now is I shouldn't be chopping. I've got seven people chopping wood. Shouldn't shouldn't need to do it. There should be no need to do it right now. No need at all. I should move them straight over to food, and potentially think about aging up. So I've got 11 pikemen here in the middle of the base. You can see very, very defensive the way that I've built the buildings. Think about that. Think about your building placement. Think about Dutch are very sort of defensive. It's very hard to sort of rush as the Dutch because you have to stop to build your banks. Banks are so important. And banks cost a lot of food and a lot of wood. And it can really prevent you from trying to rush as the Dutch. So... Try and play defensive. And you can see here I've made like a nice little wall. And he's trying to spot to see if I've got any. See like I'm nearly able to. I could have I could have picked that Hussar off there. I could have killed it. But you can see that he's trying his best to micro. Now I did train some skirmishers. Now an interesting thing about the Dutch that I forgot to mention is. You can train skirmishers in age 2. Which is quite powerful. Because skirmishers for the for the other civilizations they have to do it in age three, so skirmishers are uh, light infantry that counter heavy infantry and they counter anti cav. So like your ranged light cavalry, they counter as well, like dragoons, riders, 
and uh, hacker pellets as well which are from the swedes so yeah just bear that in mind i don't really know why i did i trained those skirmishes to be honest i i, I think that was a bad decision i think i should just focus everyone on food and i should just try and age up now um as much as i can So Vicious is saying to me, uh, make a stables, make stables. Um, to be honest, I, d I don't know whether that would have been the best thing. I think trying to focus on an age up would be good because the French are probably going to be aging up very shortly. You can see I've got a thousand, look, I've got a thousand gold, thousand gold now, um, you know, and 850 food. I could easily just buy a little bit more food. And then it will only take maybe 30 seconds and boom, I'll be able to get into age three. And when you go age three, ideally there's two options for me, to be honest. One of the options is the Exiled Prince, which um, is gets you uh, ages up very fast into age three. I would recommend that if someone has aged up before you. So if, if someone clicks up to age three before you, I would definitely age up very fast or there's the more greedy option where you can age up with a town center travois which means you can build a second tc free of charge the minute you age up into age three so they're they're my two options that i pick to be honest so just bear in mind i'm going to show you just the first 10 minutes i'm not going to show you the full game because the video will go on way too long i'm just going to show you what you do as an opening you can see i'm getting four villagers now four settlers so let me just wind that back there because was there the option to get, um, let me just see. Was there the option to get 600 wood? I won't be able to make writers because I'll need to actually, let me just, probably need to try and age up. Yeah, so I said to myself that I probably need to age up. I've got 900 food, 1200 gold. Now there's an option here to go either the 600 wood or go the four villagers. To be honest, I don't know. It's an interesting one. Let me know in the comments down below what you think I should have done there, whether I should have gone for the four veils or the 600 wood. I think I should have gone for the 600 wood because it just would have really helped me get a, get my fifth bank. I haven't got my fifth bank yet. I've only got four banks. That would have helped. And also to get a couple of houses. And also the wood could help to upgrade my units when I get into age three. So you can see here, so, so here's the options for age three. So, there's the bishop and the exiled prince. Now, what I should have done is I definitely in this situation should have gone for the exiled prince. Like, I'm playing against French. French players will most of the time do a semi-FF or they'll either rush you in age two. I haven't really seen that from him. He's brought out his five hussars to try and raid a bit. So I think that's all he's really spent on military units. So what I should do to try and get ahead of him is I should have really gone for the age up very fast. I think I should have done that. It would have given me... Um, better cards to be able to use I could have got nine writers out they would have been good against hussars but instead I go for a greedy option and I go for the bishop and I think that's one of the reasons why I think I lose this game because I, th I think I do lose this one so that's quite a bad decision I think because he has he has aged up to age three so I should have probably gone for the quick age up So at this point, I know that I'm going to be expecting probably Falconets because most of the time when, when European civs get into age three, they will pick that two Falconet card, which is your artillery unit that is good against I got, infantry. I I needed, it was. You can see our eco is very, very similar. Our overall score, sorry. He's nearly 12,700. I'm just, just below 12,000. So very, very similar. But you can see that he's established a trading post in the center of the map. And here I'm just chopping tons of wood. Um, now, as I say, if I had the 600 wood, I wouldn't need to be chopping this much. Uh, I could be uh, helping try to get more food um, and stuff like that. And it would have helped me. And, and then I could have easily just built a fifth bank. So many things I could have done there. So this is at 10 minutes 30. Uh, and I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to leave it here to give you an idea of how you should sort of open as the Dutch. So I hope you found this sort of useful. Ideally, when you get into from age two to age three, you can either have three banks, four or five banks. It depends how greedy 
you're able to be and how much you're being pressured by your opponent. So normally, as I say, you'll easily be able to have two banks because you should really build one as you're transitioning from age one to age two. You should have a card that gives you the second bank and then the 700 wood and the 400 wood from your quartermaster, your card, and potentially 600 wood as well if you want to get another shipment. That is going to give you a total of 1,700 wood. Just think about that. 1,700 wood to be able to build all of your buildings. And think about a bank is 350 wood. So four banks to build plus your free one. So four banks at 350. Let's do the math. That's 200. So that's 1,400 wood. See, so a large amount of wood is used to get your five banks. So it is very greedy. So I wouldn't always recommend having five banks before you get into age three. I think four banks is definitely fine. Three banks, it completely depends, but you definitely want a minimum of three. So that's enough on banks. I hope you guys found this sort of useful. Um, and let's just clear up with the final part to the video, which is just things to note about this sieve. Let's do it. So there we are guys, I hope you really enjoyed that guide of the Dutch. So we went through those three key areas which I think is really really useful for beginner players. But just some things to note on the Dutch and that is the recent patch. So please have a look at the recent patch, I can't remember what number it is. But basically it's increasing the settler limit from 50 to 60 because of those two cards that you can get in age 1 that I mentioned in my deck part and also the increase to the gather rate of gold from your settlers gathering gold has increased as well so this means that you can now drastically um, age up a lot quicker from age one to age two you should really easily be able to start aging up at three minutes start aging up at three minutes and even sub three minutes maybe two minutes 50 something like that so just bear that in mind what i would say going forward into age three and age four is your army composition sort of wants to be skirmisher writer so skirmishers good at heavy infantry ranged ranged cavalry writers good at heavy cav and also sometimes artillery units if you put them in melee mode but that's sort of neither here nor there that's kind of an interesting one but really you want to get um not falconets you want to get culverins uh, at some point so culverins are the artillery piece that is good at other artillery pieces so really your full composition ideally most of the time will be skirmisher writer and some culverins and that's pretty much it so they're just things to know i hope you guys really enjoyed this guide you guys know what to do to support the channel you can catch me streaming on twitch at widgie1 take care